exacerbated. In Peru, thousands of people took part in nationwide demonstrations Thursday to support an indigenous protest against oil and natural gas exploitation in the Amazon rainforest. Police used tear gas and a crowd of at least 20,000 protesters near the National Congress in Lima. Tensions have flared after last week's police killings of an estimated 30 civilians at an indigenous roadblock, though the number could be much higher. On a visit to Cuba, Bolivian President Evo Morales voiced support for the indigenous protests. No es posible que nuevamente los más vilipendiados de la historia latinoamericana sean... It's not possible that the most oppressed people in Latin America's history be humiliated like we have seen in recent days in some regions. We hope these problems are a lesson in understanding the demands, the demands of defending life, the environment, the planet Earth and humanity, as Fidel said. The unrest in Peru has ties to U.S. trade policy. The land laws that sparked the uprising were passed under fast-track authority granted to Peruvian President Alan Garcia's government to implement the U.S.-Peru Free Trade Agreement. On Thursday, three activists were released from jail following their arrest for blockading the New York offices of Democratic Senator Charles Schumer. The activists say they confronted Schumer for his refusal to address human rights concerns in voting for the U.S.-Peru trade deal in 2007. Back in the United States, environmental groups and Appalachian activists are criticizing new Obama administration rules on mountaintop removal as too lax on the coal industry. On Thursday, the White House unveiled new regulations governing mountaintop removal, the controversial coal mining practice that has caused extensive environmental damage in the Appalachian region. The charges include ending fast-track approval for new mining permits, imposing more extensive environmental reviews, and asserting federal authority over state-level regulators. But critics say the rules offer few specifics and will have little effect, if any. Joan Mulhern of Earth Justice said, quote, the administration's proposing to essentially rearrange the bureaucratic deck chairs on the disaster ship that is mountaintop removal. They announced no substantive policies to actually stop the destruction it's caused, she said. A new Department of Interior report has faulted the Bush administration for its rush to sell off oil and gas exploitation rights on vast swaths of federal land in Utah last year. The report says the Bush administration did not follow longstanding procedures in trying to sell off 22 parcels of land. The sale was later canceled by Obama administration Interior Secretary Ken Salazar. The report's findings could bolster the defense of a college student who disrupted the auction by posing as a bidder. The student, Tim DeChristopher, is currently facing 10 years in prison on charges of interfering with a public auction. In California, a 24-year-old Iraq war vet has committed suicide. Former Army Specialist Trevor Hogue was found dead in his childhood home last week. He'd hung himself to death. His mother says he was left seriously emotionally scarred after witnessing a bombing attack on other members of his unit. An owner of a California dispensary for medical marijuana has been sentenced to a year in prison. The owner, Charles Lynch, was given the jail term despite the Obama administration's vow not to prosecute medical dispensers who comply with state law. But federal judge George Wu said the new federal policy would not affect his ruling. And analog television signals will shut off tonight as the U.S. completes the transition to digital TV. The survey group Nielsen says around 2.8 million homes remain unprepared for the switch. Most of the unprepared households fall in the low-income, elderly, and rural demographics. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.